ever pondered about the seven deadly sins and how they might be impacting your life? You see, these seven deadly sins aren't just old-fashioned concepts from a bygone era. They're very much present in our day-to-day -day lives, subtly influencing our decisions, shaping our personalities, and even determining our destinies. From the moment we wake up to the time we shut our eyes at night, we are faced with choices. Each choice, as minute as it may seem, carries with it the potential to either uplift us or lead us astray. It's these moments, these crossroads, where understanding the seven deadly sins becomes crucial. Lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. These aren't just words or labels, they are forces that can drive us towards actions which may not align with our higher selves. Recognizing these forces, understanding their implications, and learning how to navigate them, is a journey of self-discovery and spiritual growth. Join me on this insightful journey as we delve into each of these sins and explore practical steps to overcome them. Pride, often considered the first of the seven deadly sins, what does it truly mean? You see, pride isn't just about boasting or bragging. It's a deep-rooted form of self-centeredness, a desire to put ourselves above others. It's a destructive force that can lead to broken relationships and a life filled with discontent. But how does one overcome this sin of pride? The answer lies in humility and gratitude. Humility is about recognizing our own limitations and acknowledging the worth of others. It's about celebrating others' achievements and successes without feeling threatened. Gratitude, on the other hand, helps us appreciate what we have, instead of always wanting more. It's about recognizing the blessings in our lives, and being thankful for them. So next time you feel that surge of pride, take a step back, practice humility, be grateful because that's the path to overcoming pride and building a life of contentment and peace. Remember, humility isn't thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Envy, a green-eyed monster that breeds discontent. How can we conquer it? Envy, one of the seven deadly sins, is a destructive force that can wreak havoc in our lives. It's a feeling of discontent or covetousness with regard to another's advantages, success, or possessions. This green-eyed monster can blind us to our own blessings and strengths, causing us to lose sight of our own worth. It can lead to resentment, bitterness, and even hatred. It's a trap that can ensnare us in negativity and dissatisfaction. So how can we overcome envy? The first step is to recognize it, acknowledge that it's there, and understand how it's affecting you. Then, practice contentment. Appreciate what you have and where you are in life. Celebrate the success of others instead of yearning for what they have. Remember, another's success does not diminish your own. You are unique, and your journey is your own. Cultivate a heart of contentment, and the green-eyed monster will have no place in your life. Wrath, a destructive force that can ruin relationships. How do we control it? Picture this. A raging storm, its winds howling, lightning flashing, and thunder roaring. That's wrath. It's an intense emotional response, often characterized by anger, resentment, and a desire for vengeance. The Bible warns us about the potential harm wrath can cause, damaging not only our relationships with others but also our own peace of mind. So, how do we overcome this destructive force? The answer lies in two powerful tools, patience and forgiveness. Patience helps us to avoid reacting impulsively, giving us time to cool down and think clearly. Forgiveness, on the other hand, allows us to let go of resentment, freeing us from the chains of anger. Remember, we're all human, and we all make mistakes. Instead of lashing out in anger, let's choose patience, understanding and forgiveness. After all, aren't these the very qualities we hope others will extend to us? Patience and forgiveness are the keys to extinguishing the flames of wrath. Sloth, the sin of inaction. Can we overcome inertia and break free from it? This sin, often illustrated as a sluggish creature, represents more than just laziness. It's a spiritual apathy a lack of action when action is needed. It's the disinterest in our personal growth, our duties, our responsibilities. It's the missed opportunities, the unfulfilled potentials, the dreams left unrealized. Sloth is a silent thief. It steals time, the most valuable commodity we possess. And the price we pay, it's the regret of a life not fully lived. But remember, we are not destined to this fate. Overcoming sloth requires discipline and commitment. It's about setting small, achievable goals and taking consistent action towards them. It's about understanding that every effort, no matter how small, brings us closer to our larger aspirations. It's about embracing the power of now and taking that first step, however small, right away. With discipline and commitment, the chains of sloth can be broken. 
greed and unquenchable desire for more, how do we satisfy it? Picture this, a thirst that no amount of water can quench, a hunger that no feast can sate. This is the essence of greed. It's a destructive force, a wildfire that consumes everything in its path, leaving nothing but desolation in its wake. It's a sin that can turn even the kindest of hearts into a fortress of selfishness. But what if I told you it doesn't have to be this way? What if there's a way to tame this beast, to quench this insatiable thirst? The answer lies in two simple but powerful virtues, generosity and detachment. Generosity, the act of giving without expecting anything in return, can extinguish the flames of greed. Detachment, the ability to let go of our possessions and desires, can free us from the chains of greed. So, the next time greed rears its ugly head, remember these two virtues. Generosity and detachment are the antidotes for the poison of greed. Gluttony. An overindulgence in anything to the point of waste. How do we regulate it? This isn't just about consuming food or drink in excess, but rather it's an insatiable desire to consume more than is needed. It's the pursuit of pleasure for its own sake, without regard for balance or purpose. This can lead to negative consequences, not only for ourselves, but also for those around us. The effects of gluttony can be seen in many aspects of life. It can lead to physical health issues like obesity and heart disease or mental health problems like anxiety and depression. It can also result in waste, as we use up resources that could be better used elsewhere. So, how can we overcome gluttony? The answer is through moderation and self-control. By being mindful of our consumption, we can ensure that we're not overindulging. We can practice self-discipline, taking only what we need and leaving the rest for others. Through moderation and self-control we can curb the excesses of gluttony. Lust, a misdirected desire that can lead us astray, how can we redirect it? Lust, often misunderstood, is more than just physical attraction. It's an intense, often uncontrollable desire that can consume us, leading us away from the path of righteousness. It can distort our perception of love and respect, turning them into selfish wants and needs. But fear not, for there are ways to overcome it. The journey begins with purity of mind and heart. It's about filling your thoughts with respect, understanding and genuine affection for others. It's about seeing beyond the physical, appreciating the soul within. And it's about understanding the true essence of love, which is selfless and pure. Practicing self-discipline is also key. It helps us control our desires, not letting them control us. And always remember every person is a unique creation deserving of respect and dignity. With a pure mind and heart, we can navigate away from the dangerous shores of lust. We've explored the seven deadly sins and their practical remedies. What's the takeaway? Well, let's take a moment to reflect. We've looked into the depths of pride, the first deadly sin, and discovered that humility is the key to overcoming it. Remember to accept your limitations, recognize the worth of others, and appreciate the blessings you have. Next, we tackled envy, also known as the green-eyed monster. The antidote to this sin is gratitude. Practice contentment and focus on your own journey, not someone else's. Then, we uncovered the destructive force of wrath. Patience and understanding can keep this beast at bay. When anger rises, remember to take deep breaths, listen more, and react less. Sloth, the sin of inaction was our next conquest. Diligence and motivation are the stepping stones to overcoming this sin. Challenge yourself to be proactive and take responsibility for your actions. The fifth sin, greed, the unquenchable desire for more, can be tamed by practicing generosity. Sharing what you have, time, resources or knowledge will bring more satisfaction than hoarding ever will. We also talked about gluttony, the sin of overindulgence. Temperance and self-control are the keys to overcoming this sin. Moderation in all aspects of life is the golden rule to follow. Lastly we discussed lust, the misdirected desire. Chastity and respect for the sanctity of relationships will help you keep this sin in check. Understand that true love is about respect, commitment and selflessness. By applying these remedies in our lives we can gradually overcome the seven deadly sins. It's important to remember that these are not mere moral guidelines but practical steps towards leading a meaningful and virtuous life. They help us build strong character, foster healthy relationships and create a positive impact on the world around us. Remember, overcoming these sins is not an overnight task, but a lifelong journey towards spiritual growth and maturity. Stay steadfast on this path and you'll truly be victorious over the seven deadly sins.